Welcome to Wiki Bearings, where we dive into the worlds of engineering excellence, from the automotive marvels to the industrial giants. Join us to explore the wonders that keeps the world in motion. My name is Hassanin Alwan, and I'm your host. Welcome to another episode of Wiki Bearings. In today's episode, we're going to talk about open versus closed type bearings. We're going to talk about the different types, when and why do we use them, and we're going to bust the myth around this topic. We know that there is a lot of bearings that are closed type, what we call them sealed or shielded, and then the open types. And in many times, people are confused. Do I use the closed type? Do I use the sealed one, the shield one? Which one is better? And so on. Now, when we think about closed bearings, and many times what comes to the mind are the ball bearings, because they are the most common, the most versatile, and the most common in sealed. But of course, if there are spherical roller bearings, the latest generation, they can come in sealed types, needle rollers, uh, bearing units, most of them come sealed. So they are, it's not only about ball bearings. I can understand that we think about ball bearings because we see them more often in, the, in everyday application in our washing machine or it's a mixer or it's a vacuum cleaner. So it's much more visible in our skateboard, uh, roll blades and so on. So this makes them more visible and we think more about that. Now, we will not talk into all the different types of bearings that come seals, but we will dive deeper into the different types of seal and open types and what the difference and how when to use them. When talking about sealed bearings, I think before that, we have to understand what is unsealed bearings now, or what we call them the open type. So unsealed or open type bearings that are bearings that doesn't have a seal, it's fully exposed. We call them like the open book bearings. So you can see through them, you can see the components, the rolling elements, name it. And usually they are very interesting when looking at them because you can see all the components rolling in there, but they at the same time have their own challenges. Now, now let's look at, at the brighter sides. Now, what is the benefit of having an open type bearings? Now, many engineers think about them as the mechanical dreams, because everything is visible, it's easy to lubricate, it's easy to see if there are any contamination, any issues, it's, it's even visually visible. So it's very, very easy to inspect, change, re-lubricate, do the maintenance. Now, the other advantage to it is the looking at the temperature. Now, when it comes to seal bearings, usually because of the seal, we cannot go up to a higher operational temperature, but when it's an open bearings, the temperature, is, the higher operation temperature is not a problem. So this is two things, the accessibility and the temperature when it comes to open bearing. Now, what are the drawbacks? What are the disadvantages of happening? Now, what I will call them the contamination chaos. Now, you have an open bearing, you are welcoming all the contaminations, dust, dirt, moist, water. So everything around in that environment can lead to the bearing, damaging in it, shortening its lifespan. Now, the other disadvantage, these bearings loves lubrication because there is nothing that prevents the lubrication from leaking out. So you have to keep relubricating, greasing, and so on. So they could waste a lot of lubrication compared to a normal bearing, or let's call it compared to a seal bearing. Now, at what environment or what, where and when do we use open bearings? I think if we don't need or there is not so many, so much of contamination, indoor, clean environments where we need more maintenance for other reasons, then it's easier to maintain and we can use an open bearings. Now, you will find a lot of applications like could be household's application, some of them, indoor machineries is using open types. Now, I think when it comes to some uh, sport equipment as well, where you use them indoor, like I say, a threadmill, uh, all of the sports equipment, 
Some of them, of course, are sealed, but many of them are open because usually you don't have a very contaminated environment uh, in a gym. So I hope we now know and understand unsealed bearing. Now let's talk about the sealed bearings. Now, when we think about a sealed bearing, most of the time we think about the rubber seal. But actually, we call shielded bearing or metal sealed bearings is another type that we can also talk about. Now, when we think about seal bearing, we think about RS, which is the most common suffix we use and comes from sealed bearings or rubber, actually it comes from rubber seal, so RS, and close types is 2RS. Uh, Two-side close type is 2RS. So it's very simple as the word cell. It's a bearing where we have put some walls to protect the bearing from external contamination. Now, what are the the advantages of of a seal bearing? Of course, less contamination, less dirt, dust, wet, uh, less exposure to the environment, which means normally a longer span for the bearing, so a better life for a bearing. Now, the other advantage is usually these bearings are Lubricated for life, so you don't need to re-lubricate, do the maintenance, so it's less maintenance, less hassle. So simply you save time and you can save money. And if this is the right application, equipment for the right environment. So not everywhere, as we said, not every time a seal bending is the right, but if it's the right application, we save time, money, and cost, as we don't need to relubricate or do maintenance. Now, the disadvantage of, of having a, a sealed bearing, one is it's a high friction factor. These bearings are, the seals are always in contact with the metal and it's called sept. Now, this friction is not very high, but there is a friction. So if we need low torque bearings, we maybe should find another, another types of bearing. We're going to talk about our sealed or shielded bearings uh, they can be also an option. Now, there is a small friction happening and uh, the seal can get damaged if we are using very high speed on a seal bearing. So if we have high speeds and the friction is, is, is a problem, let's say because of the torque, then seal bearing is not the right choice. Now, if we have a higher operating temperature, the seal can get damaged or degraded and over time the sealing is not anymore working so you get all the dust and the lifetime the lifespan of the bearing get damaged when we talk about rubber seal we always think about contact seals now what we call them rs the 2rs seals but there we have also other types of seals there are many different types of seals but in today episode we're going to cover the contacts and the non-contact seals now the, the general contact seals, which is the 2RS, the common type seal, are usually very good in sealing the bearing from wet, moist dust, and it is the best sealing out and protects the leak of the grease or the lubrication from the bearings. Now, the non-contact, on the other hand, is uh, what we call them the labyrinth seals. They work a little bit differently. They are non-contact seals. And they are more, the shape of it is as a labyrinth, which trap the contamination outside. So it prevents it from entering. It makes it a bit tricky for the contamination or the dust or the moist to enter the bearing. At the same time, make it difficult for the lubrication to leak out of the bearing. But it is non-contact, which means it's not the same protection as a fully sealed bearings. So... We have the contact and non-contact. Now, the advantage of non-contact is when it's come to speed. So if we have higher speed and we still need a good sealing, then maybe a contact, a non-contact seal is the solution. As there is less friction, maybe, yes, it's, there is a slight disadvantage on the sealing, but that is very minimal. So non-contact seals are a very good option for higher speed. Now, Cost can be also a player here, or we maybe can look at it as a disadvantage. They are slightly higher in cost. Uh, non-contact is slightly higher in cost. Not, not always the case, not all the sizes, not all the types, but 
there can be a cost implication to it. Now, for rubber seals in general, seal bearings, we can see them in many different applications. Automotive, it can be in wheel bearings. We can see them in electrical motors, in agriculture. Now, when you look at the, uh, the environment of the agriculture industry, harvesters, all this dust, mud, weight, rain, name it, all the <laughs> contamination are there. So in most of these applications, we need seal bearings. Now, we have households application where, I don't know, we have a mixer where uh, there is wet environment, there is water and so on. We need sealed bearings. So it is now becoming, if we look at the industry, we are moving slowly to more sealed application to protect and to have less maintenance, maintenance-free bearings, greased for lives, and so on. So we are slowly moving to that direction. And also, I think it's a good, we started to have also a cleaner environment in most of the cases. But as we move even in some time in a clear environment, as we move to have or interested in less maintenance bearings, we are moving to sealed bearings. When we talk about seals, I think it's worth mentioning the metal seal or the shielded bearings. Now, instead of a rubber seal, we use a metal. Now, this is not as good sealing and protection for the bearing as a rubber, but still a good protection, especially for other contaminations that not are not so fine contaminations. So now what is the advantage of, of having a, a, a metal seal? One, it can take higher speed as there is no contact with the metal. So it takes much higher speed. And as metal is not impacted so much by temperature, so you don't get that degrading of the seal throughout time or the with temperature so usually if we have speed if we have a higher operational temperature in most of the time we choose metal shields or metal seals now commonly we call them zz seals zz shield and usually we can see them compared to the seals the rubber seals are black rubber the other one usually Metal can come in silver, goldish color, depending on the brand, and so on. Of course, now when we cover the, when we looked at both the metal shield, the seals, and the non-contact, the contact, then we are somehow confused. So how do I know which one is which one? Different brand have a different. So let's try to decode all the suffix around this. What does that mean? Now, open, when you don't have a suffix, if you have 6202, there is no suffix. Usually it's an open type. Now, if you have 2RS or you have ZZ, most of the time this means this bearing is shield or sealed. Now, there are many brands outside and there are many, they have so many different suffix representing the, the sealed bearings. I'm going to talk about the top brands, so you just have, you get an idea. Now, if we look at SKF, SKF is using 2RS. The same thing is using Koyo. Uh, now, NTN using LLU. NSK is using DDU. FA, FAG using 2HRS. Now, all what I said is related to normal contact rubber seal. Now, there are other brands like uh, Nachi, which is 2NSE, and so on. So if we have a bearing that says 63052RS in, in SKF, which means it's a rubber seal, the same thing for Koyo. If said LLU, 6305LLU C3, most probably it's a sealed bearing with a C3 clearance. Now, most of the brand, when it comes to shield, most common brands are using either double Z or two Z. So ZZ or number two NZ. Now, most of the common brands are using the same for all the metal shield. Now, when it comes to the non-contact, the labyrinth seals is a little bit trickier because every brand uh, come up with their own suffix. Starting with SKF, they're using RZ or 
two RZ if it's sealed both times. NTN using LLB, NSKs using VV, FAG are using two BRS, Koyo is using two RU, and then Nachi is using two NKE. Now, of course, I cannot mention all the brands. When it's come to, to non-contact seals, actually not every brand is having these types of seals. Usually, it requires years of experience, knowledge in sealing bearing. So you will have mainly the top brand are using the non-contact seals. So it's not very common, but these are, as I, I, I named, the most common brands and the most. So just to recap that, I know maybe I went too fast. So for SKF, they are using 2RZ, NTN using LLB, NSK are using VV, Natch is using 2NKE or NKE for one side and two for two sides. Then Koyo with 2RU and 2BRS for FAG. I know that you think, but I have seen other types of seals or I've heard some uh, other suffixes. Yes, there are special types, Python seals, different types of seals, special application seals. I know in, in NTN there is LLH um, and they are more high temperature seals and so on. Now, this is not the time to discuss this. We can go deeper, but these are the most common sealed and shield bear. As I said, we're going to bust the myth around this. So some of you have asked this question, the most common questions or the myth outside in the market. And so as we sell hundreds of thousands, millions of these bearings to different markets, there are some perception about one is good, the other one is not so good, and so on. And we have seen in some markets that they buy one type of seals and they don't buy the other one. They think this one is better and so on. Now, I have four main myths that I would like to discuss with you and give you some, some and we'll see if it's a myth or if it's true. So the first one is seal bearing requires no maintenance. Is this a myth or is it true? I would say in most of the cases is true for normal application. Now, if we exceed the speed of the bearing or the operational temperature, now for whatever reason is that, then maybe we have to look at the bearing again and see if the seals are still intact. Do we have a bleeding from the, from the seal for the lubrication? Do we see lubrication around the bearing? Something like this. We have to look at this just to check. If we, we see these signs, maybe we should reseal the bearing or change the bearings. So that requires. Now, in normal application, in normal conditions, the bearing does not need any maintenance, almost no maintenance. And it's greased for life, so there is no problem. So I would say, yes, seal bearing requires minimal maintenance. I will not use the word no maintenance, but I will say minimal maintenance. Another topic that we see some, some people talks about, uh, that uh, the seal bearing lasts forever. This is obviously a myth. There is no bearing that lasts forever. Yes, they can last very long. You can, you can have uh, a bearings that you put in a certain application or you can have it in your household application and you never need to change it. You never need to do anything. You never need to look at it. But we cannot say that they last forever. Every bearing is designed for a certain lifespan. Now, this lifespan could be 10 years, could be 20 years, could be five years, but there is a lifespan. So the bearing does never last forever. But if we have the right seal and the right application, they will last long enough that you don't need to worry about them or you don't need to change them. Like a simple example, uh, a wheel bearing, a sealed wheel bearing lasts 100,000 kilometers maybe 80 in, in, in harsh road condition, maybe 120 in, let's say, more bumpy roads or muddy roads and so on. But they last for 100,000 kilometers, give or take. That also says that it's not lasting forever. So you have to change the bearing around 100, 120,000 kilometers. Now, some hub bearings with advanced technology, advanced sealing, much more protected. 
These bearings can last up to 200,000 kilometers, but again, they don't last forever. So seal bearing lasts forever is a myth. Now, another question or another uh, that I hear always that seal bearings are always quieter. Now, this is maybe true depending on sometimes open type sealed with oil and when you have a higher speed, you, the noise can be higher than a seal bearing. Now, with the grease inside a seal bearing, the noise can be less. Yes, but you still, if it's a higher speed, you still, there is a, a contact with the seal, so not necessarily much lower. So I would, I would say it's not necessarily, but seal bearings are slightly quieter than an open type. To our final one, seal bearings are more expensive than open type. So there is a lot of concept about sealed bearings that are more expensive and maybe open type, but let's, let's look at it in, in two different ways. One, in some sizes of bearings, there are more production on sealed ones than open types because of the production size. Maybe a million, a batch of millions of bearings are produced sealed. The cost can be the same or sometimes even less. Now, when it comes to, so we, we cannot generalize. Yes, as we are adding a seal, as we are lubricating that, there is like logically a cost to this. But when we go, if we produce smaller batches, open types, a thousand in a batch, it's actually more expensive to produce when compared to producing a million bearing sealed. So that is one aspect. The other aspect, if we look at the cost, relubricating, maintenance, the continuous inspection of the bearing, the open type to see if the condition can be way more costly if you really need a sealed bearing. So when it comes to cost, it's negligible cost compared to an open type that you need to do all the maintenance and relubrication and inspection all the time. So here I would say it's not the more, it's more expensive. It will be, for you, way, way cheaper. I hope you, in this episode, we are able to cover the sealed and the open tab. You understand what is the difference between all of them. And we, I hope that I was able to enlighten you on all of this. Thank you for today and see you next time. And that wraps another episode of Wiki Bearings. Don't forget to subscribe for more insight into the fascinating realm of the engineering innovation. Until next time, keep spinning towards greatness.